So thank you, um, Safira, for the introduction. Um, and as you mentioned at the beginning, I think that there's different perspectives on this panel. So I'll be speaking from a slightly different perspective. Um, and also the way that I approached the question was a little bit different than the way that you've approached them in the sense that like you've gone through them one by one. Um, what I've looked at has been more the, the questions as a, as a whole. So I'll, I'll address them in that manner. Um, so again, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to speak in this space and also for the distinguished speakers who are, who are present here today and who have also shared their very valuable um, experience from different, as I mentioned, uh, levels and different experiences and different points of views. Um, I think that as the world continues to become aware of the interconnectedness that exists of all of its actions and also the shared humanity of all of its members, that it's not like some people are one thing and others are other, but really that shared humanity. We also become very much aware that the issues that affect one part of the world are present in other parts of the world as well. And even though maybe the, the shape or the form that those issues take might be different depending on different realities, the questions or the sort of main issues uh, are the, the same or are similar across the globe. Um, and given this complexity, I think it's important to have a variety of actors who are participating at different levels to try to address these questions. So that the answers to these questions are not going to come from one actor or another actor, but really from a variety of actors and all trying to answer these questions from their different uh, points of views. And in that way, I think really that's what we mean also when we talk about multi-sectorial or multi-dimensional work. Um, and in a way, finally, what will allow us to find solutions is that the wealth of multiple perspectives and actions of all of these members will really ensure that more and more people are involved and invested in finding answers to those questions. I think that we could all agree that we're trying to learn about how to bring to fruition or translate into reality a set of principles which we all hold dear into concrete actions. And those ideals or principles can be said to have a shared moral imperative and that as a collective humanity, we are grappling with how to make sure that those ideals actually inform actions at the international, national, and grassroots level. The Baha'i international community is one such actor and it is engaged in exploring how high ideals can be put into practice, but also seeking to avoid the pitfall of reducing complex issues into simple formulas for action. So I think that's what we're all really trying to do uh, from different points of, of view and from different sort of um, ways in which we can really engage. Um, in the past few days, and in particular in the high-level panel yesterday, there was a myriad of important and pertinent issues as regards to the role of youth in society. Some that were explored were at the level of national policy, and some of the topics that uh, we saw covered included the relationship between development and youth employment, the need for further reconciliation of work and family life, the need for technological access and literacy, school desertion, the reality of a spectrum on which, on one hand, uh, individuals who are afraid of starting families due to the economic repercussions of such a choice, while on the other side, uh, maybe girls and women are leaving at a younger and younger age from their homes to start families. Um, at the same time, there was also attention paid to paying uh, particular attention to the transition period between education and the insertion into labor markets, a tendency for youth radicalization in particular societies, and also the levels of poverty among youth in comparison to poverty among, uh, compared to society as a whole. So those were some of the subjects that we saw that were, have been covered in the last few days. And thoughtful and consecrated work is clearly being done in all of these areas. And I would like to add just some comments to these collective questions. So one thing that we have observed in the various programs that are being offered by the Baha'i community worldwide has been the willingness and the energy with which youth have participated when giving the chance. They want to engage and participate, but they also want to see that their actions actually have an impact, that what they do brings about change. Um, in one particular program, for example, our conversations with youth have shown how they become more mo motivated to act in their own communities and to bring about change once they saw 
that they could actually affect the change, like that they could actually do something, and that what they would do would actually sort of have that impact that I was referring to. So in other words, that change, that seeing change, was actually what motivated them to continue to work for those high ideals. Um, however, it's also true that we need high quality education in order uh, to help us achieve those goals. Um, and while it is true that education and practical skills is very important when considering, for example, entering the labor market, which has been one of the topic, topics of conversation, it is not enough to say that the purpose of education is simply to find a job without tapping into more profound sources of human motivation. So reducing education to simply a set of skills to be acquired limits the sense of agency in the youth of today, which we can see in increasing levels of apathy. Therefore, in our work, what we have seen is that when education becomes imbued with a clear sense of purpose, it can be seen as a lifelong process of learning rather than just acquiring a diploma. Similarly, our conception of the period of youth as a period through which we have all gone through or all will go through as a reality of a shared humanity is much more different than thinking of the category of youth as a strategic category, which we are simply a huge conglomeration of needs and problems. So I think one concrete example from Colombia really highlights some of these points that I would like to share with you at this uh, moment. So in a small community in the north coast of Colombia, a group of youth were studying together about a series of themes around environmental issues. As a part of the practice of their study, they were asked to hold a community meeting to consult with all the members of the community around the subject of solid waste management. Over a period of six months, the group studied together, learned about the subject, but also held periodic meetings with the community members in which they shared what they had learned. Together, they analyzed the patterns of consumption of the community and the types of waste that they were being produced and how they were disposing of that waste. It became apparent that trash was either being left on the streets or dumped into the nearby river, which then affected the livelihood of the community as well as their health. The group decided to carry out a series of projects, which they termed service projects, um, in conjunction with the community around that specific subject. First, the youth were able to help the community identify how to diminish the waste that resulted from their work. Um, they also made, had a series of cleanup days in the community. They made signs, they bought trash cans with their own limited funds, and set them up strategically around the town. The youth also visited the families one by one and shared with them about what they had learned like helping them learn about composting, about recycling, about separating waste. Um, and they also designated together a place in the community where waste should be left so that it, could no, it would no longer be dumped in the river. The community was also able to organize itself and the youth played an essential pivotal role. Then the next step that this group decided to take was to petition the municipal government to ensure that the local garbage truck would stop by their community twice a week to collect the trash. And while the petitions were made at different levels, they were not able to get a response from the local government. So I think from this informative grassroots experience, maybe we can draw a number of, dis of conclusions which maybe can enrich our discussion. <coughs> so first of all, the youth were seen as part of the community. They, and they were the catalyst of change within that community, but they were not perceived as an outside group or they were not divorced from the whole either. So they were just part of the community. They weren't an arbitrary category, but they were members of community concerned with local and practical questions that were really like issues um, at, for that community at that particular moment in time. The community was able to gain awareness of the issue that affected it to organize itself to tackle the issue and to find strength in the process of collective action. That process was initiated by education on the one hand, but also access to knowledge. And the type of knowledge that we saw was not one that was divorced from the local reality, but rather led to subsequent action. And that was actually pertinent to the questions that they had. Um, the youth organized the community to their greatest capacity, but it also became apparent that for long-term impact, 
local authorities and other actors also needed to be involved. So no matter what you do at the grassroots level, there also needs to be that uh, relationship with local, in this case, local or municipal authorities. Um, at a higher level, maybe at the local, regional, or even national level, certain policies are necessary for grassroots actions to connect with a wider national agenda. In this case, maybe a national environmental agenda. So the need for that connection, again, is very much stressed. Um, and rather than them being a story of failure or success or being analyzed in that way, I hope that this anecdote highlights the importance of work to be realized at all levels with multiple actors for change to actually be effective. And while in no way conclusive, conclusive this, these statements and this example aim to bring to light the conversation around some elements when thinking about youth as catalysts of change in their communities. However, I would like to add before I end that there is power in the way when we talk, in which we talk about a particular group of people and that our conversations and perceptions can begin to shape notions of what it means to be a youth today. For example, youth are described as a future holding immense potential. And at the same time, we see them or we talk about them as a group in crisis. And, they, and this is a portrayal which is rather paradoxical. As an apathetic group disinterested in the affairs of the, youth, of the world or as a young generation discontent, discontent with the state of the world and that they respond in ways which both generate awe but also fear. It also seems timely to consider a conversation around media outlets and media content which reinforce certain characteristics of youth and which, in, which are in many ways opposite to the example that I have shared today. And I think this is a theme which needs further attention, even though I won't go uh, into detail right now. And it is unfortunate then to think that millions of youth are being described as passive, uneducated, unskilled, which in turn affects the way they perceive themselves and hinders the unlimited potential that they actually possess. People are at the center of the Agenda 2030, and this is a major victory, but care must be taken lest people are treated primarily as, po as passive objects to be developed. So building both volition and capacity in growing numbers of youth con to contribute, each according to his or her particular circumstances to the common good, and become protagonists of development that is both sustainable and just. So those were just some comments, which I hope will enrich our, our discussion, as you were saying, ladies.